Hey gang, welcome back. All right, so I know we've talked a little bit about different parts of stereochemistry. There's been a lot of terminology thrown around. There's a little bit more I want to introduce, and I kind of want to take the opportunity with this video to kind of tie it all back together. So you're going to hear me talk about some things that we've mentioned before, and I'm going to introduce a little bit of new stuff, but this is to kind of hopefully bring it all together. Because sometimes uh, I always struggle on figuring out which way should I, you know, sequentially, which order should I introduce topics and things like that. So hopefully we've, you know, heard some things, we've done some things, and now we can just put it all together. Okay. So I drew two structures right here. So if we want to look at them, and we can assign R and S real quick, right? This would be highest priority, then this, and then this, right? So lowest priority group would be facing away from us. This looks like R, and it is in fact R. So this structure would actually be named 2R butanol, right? So at the second position of butanol, there's an R stereoset. So then from here, if we even want to be a little, you know, savvy, since we just switched two groups like that, this is going to be S, right? Because that's a single switch. The double switch, you know, would get you back to the regular stereochemistry, but this is just a single switch. But we can even go ahead and prove that to ourselves. One, two, three. It looks like R, right? But lowest priority group is facing us, so we have to flip our configuration. Uh, so we have to assign S. So this 2R butanol, this would be 2S butanol. Okay, so if we are also going to use some more terminology, there's only one stereo center, right? But they are opposites at every stereo center, every one stereo center. So if we were going to talk about how these two are related, they would be classified as enantiomers. Okay, so the thing about enantiomers, right, is that they have all of the same physical and chemical proper or physical properties. Melting point, boiling point, same types of reactivity. The one property they differ on is something called uh, optical ah sorry optical activity. So what I mean by that is the only thing they differ by is how they rotate the plane of polarized light. Now that is just a whole bunch of words. So let me kind of explain what I mean by that. If we were to have, and this is going to be a poorly drawn light bulb, but if we were to have a light bulb, shining off light, and let's say there's some going this way, and light travels in waves, correct? So what people do to measure uh, you know, a chemical's optical activity is they'll shine light through a filter. And this filter only, because light has waves going in every which way, the filter is meant to just get all the light going in one unified direction. Okay? So, from there, the light will then travel through some type of medium where these comp a compound is contained. So, almost just think of like us, is going to be also poorly drawn. Some thin, you know, container that has, you know, either compound. Let's just pick this one first. A whole bunch of the R enantiomer. What this will do, based on the fact that it is, it has this type of stereo uh, configuration, is it's going to either bend the light to the left or to the right. Okay? So, enantiomers, the way they differ is that one of them will bend the light one way, a certain number of degrees from, from uh, you know, the normal, like a straight up and down line. The other enantiomer will bend it equally but opposite the other way. And let me make sure I get these terms correct. So, if, if let's say we had this dotted line and the light was bent this distance right here, this angle theta, this would be, you could call that compound uh, dextro-rotary, which means it bends things to the right. And you can signify that also if you see a plus sign in parentheses, or if you just see 
like a plus sign in the name of the molecule, like plus uh, 2R butanol. Or you could see lowercase d and then the name. So that's what happens when the light's bent to the right. However, right, if we looked at this enantiomer, which would bend it equally and opposite to the left, you would call that levorotary. You could signify that by a minus sign, then the name, or an L, and the name of the molecule. So enantiomers bend them equally in opposite, different directions, but that is what is meant by optical activity. Things that have, things that are chiral exhibit optical activity. So by, by having that handedness, right, because these are asymmetric, uh, molecules with stereo centers, they will exhibit optical activity. And I say asymmetric uh, because I, I want to bring back another thing I talked about in a different video, but let me wipe this up a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So what I meant by that is that these are chiral structures. They have a stereo center, right? Something that is attached to four different things and they exhibit optical activity. However, remember how we talked about mesostructures? structures that have a plane of symmetry, right? And if you have a plane of symmetry, you are achiral. So if meso, if being meso, which these are not, these are not meso, these are chiral. If being meso means you are achiral and you need chirality to exhibit optical activity, Right? Mesostructures that are achiral do not exhibit optical activity. So if you shine light at them, they do not bend, or I guess I should say rotate, the plane of polarized light. So here's what I mean by that. If I even take this simple structure like this, and I were to just add another Stereo center like this, think about this, right? This is still an R stereo center, right? One, two, three. This still is R. And if I assign stereo chemistry here, one, two, three. This is also an R stereo center. This molecule has two stereo centers. However, I think we can all see this plane of symmetry right here. The fact that this has a plane of symmetry means that this structure is meso and it is achiral. So this structure exhibits optical activity, however, this one does not. And if I even drew you another example, right? Now I think we've seen this one before. This structure also has two stereo centers, right? I can assign R and S at this position and this position. However, there's a plane of symmetry. So this structure would also not exhibit optical activity. So even if you have stereo centers, it does not guarantee chirality. You need to have stereo centers and to not be meso, AKA to not, if you are meso, you're symmetric. So you need to be asymmetric as well. I know it's a thing that sometimes gets a little wacky and confusing. So I just wanted to clear up uh, how chirality and optical activity are kind of related. I wanted to introduce those new terms, dextrorotatory and levorotatory, as well as revisit the concept of being meso, because it's a little bit of a wacky one. Uh, but I know you guys are going to keep this all straight. I know you guys are stereochemical gurus, and I know you're going to be assigning RNS like it's no one's business. So that, I think, does it for stereochem. So what I will say is now the real organic chemistry starts. So get excited, get pumped, because it's about to get real. See you in the next series.